What's up, students? Welcome back to the Ugly Chairs podcast. Hope y'all are doing well and welcome to 2024. Hope you guys have had a great start to your new year. And I'm excited to be joined by two friends today to have an awesome discussion around the topic of influence. We're joined today by Caleb, who basically is a a, a regular on the Ugly yep. Chairs podcast by now, yep. in that chair too, nonetheless. This is my favorite chair by far. Oh, absolutely. And I must sit here every time, without a doubt. Absolutely, bro. So now we're so glad to have you back in making her Ugly Chairs podcast debut. It's a big deal. The one, the only, Ebony Zimmerman. <laughs> I wish it was like fireworks that came back, yep. yeah, you know, totally. behind me. It's, yep. it's all CGI'd in the back yeah. oh, for the video. Yeah, it's going to be great. So what's up, y'all? How you guys doing? Good. Yeah, great. Yeah, it's, good? it's weird that it's 2024. Yeah. And it's always like the first couple of months of the year that I write the dates wrong. Uh -huh. like, like I'll write 23 till like probably like March or April. No, so. 100%. I don't have that problem because my age is 24. Oh, so matches 24, up. You know? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Does that make it like forget. a special year? I think it does. I don't think so. No? No. All right. Because I was 23 last year. It's going to be a very normal year yeah. then. It's, fine. Normal. it's a special yeah, year it's fine. every year. Every Fred. year, yeah. <laughs> just year after year. It's like, oh, yeah, this is this is the year. This, this is, is the year. year. <laughs> uh, no, y'all, it's great to have you guys here. Um, we're going to be talking about influence here for this episode, which is awesome. Um, and kind of to get us started with that, um, you know, when I think of the idea of influence, uh, the word that immediately comes to mind is an influencer. So when you think about maybe like a social media personality or even just celebrities in general that have, you know, influence or that you guys follow, is there anyone in particular that comes to mind as, uh, uh, again, like a celebrity that, you know, you find to have great influence in your life in some way or another? Dude, my answer to this is probably like real weird and real lame. Because right, I know that there's like, there's like formal influencers I might top you. that are like, hey, like, yeah, <laughs> they're actually really popular. Like they have that title or whatever. Yeah, totally. Uh, definitely don't watch them. What I yeah. do is like, I'll go on YouTube and watch like, I don't even know, dude. It's mm. like food science stuff that's like real niche. You know what I'm saying? Like what? not popular. Yeah, yeah. I'm so I, intrigued food though. Science. Yes. Yeah. So it's not like, yeah, again, it's not like fit, fit stuff. It's like, it's not just cooking, but it's like the science behind it. That's what I watch yeah. when I go online. Okay. That's not what I would have. Uh, no. Not what I nope. would have assumed from you. you um, know? Yeah, it's random. Is there it's like random. a specific person or is it just like any You wouldn't know food them. science? Yeah, there's a couple. There's uh, one dude's name is like Ethan Klubowski. You oh. think truly Klubowski? He like sounds a, like he does science. He's got yeah. like a million subscribers. So like, yeah, it's a thing, but yeah, it's not sure. a big thing. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah no, like, that's, I'm going to have to look lane. him up now, man. That actually looks like, it sounds fun. interesting. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. I was going to even just check it out. I'm sorry. I'm just going to be honest. Who, who, who would you, who, who would you say for you? Mine's though? probably not interesting either though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Yeah. I don't have like a formal or like somebody who's like super impactful about like change or anything. Sure. Yeah. But I have been super into, I think it, her name's Destiny Fit, Destiny Hops Fit. I'm really okay. into fitness, actually. Oh, so, okay. So, yeah, so I follow a lot of fitness influencers, and she is one that actually is hu super huge in fitness, but plus faith. And oh, so cool. when she, like, lifts or does anything, she's always like, this is in, you know, God's name. I'm lifting for God. Oh, and cool. that was the first time I've ever, like... I don't know, like experience That's that. That's really cool. Yeah, so I kind of started like implementing that into my fitness. I was like, yeah. why am I not, you know, putting God in my fitness? Yeah. So it was actually pretty cool. Yeah. So are they doing like like workouts or is it tips or like what's what's yeah? Up break with that them? down a little bit more. How does that work? Um, for her, like I mean, every influencer is different. On sure. Instagram, yeah. Totally, but like totally. for her, it's like mostly like she'll show tutorials on the stuff she's doing, like what mm. she's eating, to basically give people tips about like here's how you can stay healthy That's and cool. fit. Yeah, um, that's real cool. she also does a lot of Amazon shopping. So, oh, nice. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I good. like that piece of kind of like a product <laughs> review or like, oh yeah, yeah product like review, yeah. and then she like links it all in her. That's tricky because like literally one click and you can have it. Yep. Oh, yep. No. that's real sneaky. Yeah, yep. it is. There's that's gotta cool. be some sort of like deal on the back end of that where she gets like a percentage oh, cut of that. For so. sure, <laughs> she's like, doing quite well. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> all thanks to Ebony. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, really. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I was going to say for me, uh, also kind of a weird nicher one then as well too, but, uh, on YouTube in particular, there's this, uh, these two guys names Colin Samir and, uh, their entire like YouTube brand is essentially, they build relationship with like the biggest YouTubers, the Mr. That's Beast, cool. Ryan Trahan's huge guys cool. there. And then they have these relationships and they just bring them onto podcasts and just interview them around like how they make money on YouTube yeah. and like how they do podcasts, how they make their videos, the thought process behind it, um, which has always been really fun for me in the sense of like, uh, 
none of, not much of what they talk about, like impacts my daily work life or like personal life. But, um, watching them host a podcast, like has always been really fun for me to like learn and pull things from, yeah. especially even for, uh, even for this then too. So yeah. they're really, they're really fun yeah. to watch them too. Dude, how social media has changed how people make money is wild. Dude, it's, it's insane. Wild. Very cool. It's insane. They, they'll interview people who are like, yeah, I've made six figures a month doing just like brand deals. So like just the yep. um, little like ad read that you see in the middle of YouTube videos. Like it's insane. Yeah. It's yeah, I'm like, wild. how do I do that? Maybe right, I need to watch yeah. your videos. Those <laughs> yeah, videos right, on yeah. YouTube. Exactly. If you watch figure it out, let me know. Uh, yeah. That, let us all know. <laughs> for TikTok from Instagram though. You're mm -hmm. making a, there's a price difference there apparently. Yeah. Uh, is, wait, really? Yeah. Like Instagram, you have to try like 20 times harder, but TikTok. For some reason, you can make way more money on TikTok. Maybe that's because it's like there's only one form of content on it. That, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's dive crazy. Dive into a little bit more. But that all being said, obviously there's people that um, maybe we don't know personally, right? But there's that have influence on our lives. And uh, what I also know to be true too is like in you know our roles, we also experience the ability to influence as well. So maybe just kind of off of that idea, as you guys have thought or have thought about the way that influence has played a part in your life was that something that you've like ever thought about like growing up oh, like oh man I want to have influence one day on others was that something that you were like or was it something that was cool that you hoped to gain at some point or um maybe you see more as like a responsibility now what's that kind of relationship with um with that been for y'all yeah I don't know I think for a long time frankly I was probably kind of ignorant to it and just mm -hmm. didn't think a whole lot about frankly, how I live my life and how that how that affected other people. I think I was probably um, uh, thinking more about myself than my effect on others sure. for a real long time. And then um, at some point, and I don't even know exactly when it switched, um, starting to realize that uh, the decisions that I make don't just affect me, but they affect others. Mm -hmm. And then that responsibility piece starting to fill in a little bit. Like, sure. like you were yeah. saying, we're like, oh, like this actually is bigger than just me. And I do need to... Uh, be more thoughtful in my approach that way. Yeah, mm. sure. Yeah. yeah, it's different when the when you say like responsibility, when you realize that that is something <laughs> that is a part of your influence, like I think it changes the way that you that you act. I feel like for me though, I didn't really understand like influence to me was like you're cool or mm, sure. you have a, I don't know, you have a lot of friends or whatever it is. So I think I didn't really understand it until I was like in high school mm -hmm. of like, oh, this whole like, action things the things that I say the things that I do is impacting people like I wasn't not aware of it before but I think it just became a new like presence in my life when I like attached that responsibility piece to it mm. um but I think for the most part I was like yeah like I guess if I'm not cool then like yeah you know, I don't have influence or <laughs> so sure. it's pretty immature now thinking back but yeah but I think in a lot of ways too right like even just thinking about students who are watching this, listening to this too, right? Like this is the season of life, even thinking back for myself, right? Where I started to really even realize too, right? That, Hey, like my life can have influence on others, even right where I'm at as a high school student as well too. So um, ha was there a particular moment that you guys can think about in your life where you realized you had influenced someone's life in some way? Yeah, I, I think for me, um, there was a moment where I was in high school and the church that I was at, I was serving at like a, like a VBS kind of situation. It was like a vacation Bible school kind nice, of thing. Nice. And I didn't really think much of it. I was just hanging out with the kids that I was in. I had like a group of like fourth, fifth graders, whatever it was. And uh, there was a moment for me after like the week that that went on, one of the moms of uh, one of the boys that's in the group came up to me mm -hmm. and she was like, hey, like I just want you to know, I know that you didn't really think that was a big deal, but my son looks up to you a ton and mm -hmm. that week was super special for him that's cool and it was just kind of that moment of like oh like literally i thought i was just doing something fun in the evenings that yeah. is like you know just being a part of church and just having fun that way yeah um meant a whole lot more than i ever really thought that it would because i figured yeah. like my influence if anything would be like me uh it, it thinking of it more like leadership of like is this me explicitly like directing you but like so much of influence is this subtle thing where it's mm -hmm. like if there's a relationship here where uh you respect me or appreciate me as a person like like what what i do is gonna affect you and it and vice mm -hmm. versa does that make sense yeah so totally. like i'm seeing joel live his life and i'm like wow like i appreciate who he is uh the decisions that you make are things that i'm just gonna constantly kind of like mentally know and say like i can learn from that and like mm -hmm. influence can be that subtle sure so. yeah you put that in a book. Boom. That's great. Yeah, cut. 
I, w- I would actually love to see Caleb write like a memoir. That would be so funny. It would be so bad. Oh. I-, I would buy it. I would buy one. There it is. One, 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 one copy. One, one, one copy one, sold. Yeah. That's good. it. Done. I'd use it as a coaster. There it yeah. is. It'd be a good coaster. Um, That's awesome. Man, I think for me, I it was probably a couple of years ago, and it was actually my mom, so I don't know if that counts. Uh, why not? Go for why it. Why not? Uh, but it was when I started getting really uh, involved in counseling. Um, mm-hmm. I just knew that, like, I had, um, you know, struggled with depression, struggled with anxiety. And I just knew, I was like, man, this isn't the best way that I can be living. Uh, and so I felt that God was like, hey, like, counseling is your next step. Um, and, you know, love counseling. have been doing it, still doing it. But it was a conversation with my mom, actually. We were talking about it. And I just let her know, like, hey, this is the experience that I've had. This is what God's teaching me. Um, and because of that conversation, she realized like stuff in her life, she needed to like dig up and go through. And then she went to counseling and she's been going, uh, for, I think she went for about a year after that. Um, and I think like in that moment, it's almost like more, uh, rewarding when it's a parent because it's like, I don't think I ever realized that I could have like influence on my mom or on my dad. Um, and so like after that, I was like, man, and it wasn't even anything I did necessarily. It was just like through the experience that I had by sharing it, Mm -hmm. um, actually allowed my mom to be able to, you know, do something with that. Um, so it was a really, I feel like it was a really cool experience for me. Um, and helped me realize like influence is more about like the experiences that you have and are able to share with people than it is about like just, you know, talking about things. Sure. Yeah. And that's such a killer point to dive in on too. Cause I yeah. feel like when we talk about influence, it's really easy to think immediately like, you know, like school or like with my friends. Right. Uh, yeah. But everybody has influence in literally every area that they go into. So yeah, you yeah. will influence your friends at school. You will influence your teammates at Uh, whatever sport you play people Mm -hmm. in the band that's fine but like also when you go home like every area you enter into you're you're going to change people's experience there right um and that's a perfect example of that too yeah Yeah. absolutely and it's kind of actually what i was hoping we dive into at least a little bit here then too right because i think for students a lot of times they're seeing the mr beast the huge youtubers of the world or huge social media celebrities of the world right like and saying like oh that person has influence or they're seeing um I don't know, like world leaders or um, even just other celebrities in general, these people that are, are in front of them, even just I don't know, principal at school, right? These people are the ones who actually have influence, right? Um, and I think sometimes that comes out of like a more of like a broken definition of what influence is that doesn't include them. Then where do you guys think that line is, right? Because we're even talking, right? Like some of that influence is a little bit more subtle than even in other ways too, or like we may not even recognize that we're having influence into. Where do you th- feel like that line is then? Yeah, I mean, I... I guess I don't know exactly where the line is, but where I would break that down a little bit is, uh, like you're saying, uh, you don't only have influence over the people that are like following you, right. whether that's digitally or whether that's even in person. Like yeah. literally like e- even coming here right now, like the attitude that I bring to this room is going to affect Ebony's day now. So yeah. if I come in and I'm going to be a downer, I'm going to have a bad attitude. Like that, it, that will influence her, even though she's not following me or thinking that way. Sure. Like yeah. we affect each other that way constantly. Yeah. And we mm-hmm. need to be cognizant of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's I'm crazy sure. when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't know like how to break that down either. Right. Mm-hmm. But I just think that we have a lot of people in social media that it's like you have a more visible like influence. And I think that's where we normally will go to is yeah. like when we think of influence, it's like we think of the person that we can see or that has a ton of, you know, likes, follows, whatever. Um, but kind of what to you're saying, Caleb, like it's literally our everyday life. Like yeah. we're doing things, you know, the person in the drive through, like mm-hmm. the way that they see you talk to, I don't know, the server or whatever. What are they called? The server? Uh, yeah, do it. Yeah, go, for it. go for the it. Yeah. Server. it. Depends on what the restaurant is, I guess. But yeah, yeah. we'll go server. You know yeah. what I mean? But like if they see you yelling because they got your order wrong, like, I don't right. know, like that's like you're influencing that person to be like, man, I don't, I don't know. You just think of like sure. those things. Um, so that's where I would say like. Kind of breaks down a little bit. And even just on the receiving end of that, like, as I'm starting to think back on my life, like a lot of the people that influenced me the most had no intentions of building any kind of a following. Mm. Like, it's not like they were living their life or making decisions in some kind of way that uh, they're like, oh, wow, I hope people notice. Like, honestly, it was quite the opposite where it's like, I see you uh, like living in your lane, just living with integrity and loving people. And like, that is changing my life as a result. Sure. That's like, I mean, that was Jesus, Mm -hmm. right? Like he lived Mm -hmm. a life where he was just, uh, he was humble. He did all the things that 
you know, he was supposed to do, but he wasn't doing it so that other people, you know, would recognize him or would he, he could gain a following. It was literally just mm. like he was being true to who, you know, God called him to be. Mm. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Even kind of off of that, too, I think, um, you know, as you guys have maybe even think about like students in general, whether you're putting yourselves back to when you were in high school or even just with students that you've interacted with, how have you seen like this current generation of students grapple with that that idea of influence maybe where some of the things that um you've seen it be hard for them to grapple like uh or grapple with that idea i guess yeah just like of understanding that they have influence or even to like just awesome stories of seeing students use their influence in in awesome ways into any particular stories come to mind with that yeah i mean a, a couple of things come to mind i'm yeah. always blown away by how much our students contribute to different things and like the responsibilities that they hold. Hundred like, percent. Even just talking to some students um, in HSM recently, um, hearing about some of the responsibilities that they hold on sports teams mm -hmm. or at plays or anything like that. But even like at our church, um, you know, there's high schoolers that run sound boards that are worth more than any of the money Better. I've ever had in my life. <laughs> yeah, that's like true. that's that's, that's, that's true. a big that's deal, and they're trusted with those kinds of things. So yeah. um, that always really impresses me. A thing that I feel like um, gets grappled with a whole lot is distinguishing between the difference between like online influence and in-person influence. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's interesting because online influence is objectively measured mm. with likes and shares and yeah. all of that kind of thing. Right. Uh, but when it comes to our in-person influence, there is no objective way to influence that. Mm. Like that's, mm. that's, that boils down to how, how you make people feel. Yeah. And because of that, I, I think that there's a, a natural gravitational pull to that objective measure of like, man, I just want people to think much of me, so I'm gonna post this or post that, when in yeah. reality, um, I think more times than not, you can change people's lives by mm. by this, even though you're not gonna be validated with a certain number of likes or something sure. like that. That makes sense? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was even say like to that point, I feel like when you're you know a student too, like thinking back to when I was a, you know in high school or in middle school, like my, selfishly like my main objective was I wanted people to like me like I wanted yeah. to feel loved I wanted to feel accepted sure and seen and I think that it is so much easier when you see the Instagram post and you see somebody commented and it's yeah. like that rush of like oh man I must be doing something right yeah. and it is harder like when you don't get that validation yeah. uh in person because you do think that like oh that's my influence is only like legitimate online then sure you yeah. know so absolutely and even what's cool about that too right is you know y'all are seeing that through the lens of like a little bit just more life experience now too right being a little bit older than two but um even in the roles that you guys currently serve at around the church and too and even in your families too like what has influence looked like there now than to like how has some of that definition changed or um even like your goal in influencing someone else i'm sure that's even changed then too from maybe yeah. back when, from a student perspective then too yeah I, I think the way that i'm most challenged by that um is uh really along the lines of faithfulness which is interesting because that's what we were talking about at hsm last night but like yeah. um, again when we think about influence we're thinking about the messages that we project publicly which mm -hmm. can be online and it can be on a stage um, but the thing that I've been challenged on is making sure that every part of my life um, mm -hmm. is influencing people in the right way. Mm -hmm. Like I want to have integrity publicly, but I want to have integrity like privately too. And I want to be the same person yeah. across the board. Sure. And um, because so often it's when, um, you know, you're not thinking, you know, you're not thinking you're on or something like that. And you're just hanging out with people, but like yeah. that version of your spirit, of yourself speaks even louder yeah. than the yeah. one that you're necessarily trying to portray for people. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I feel like in the people that I've honestly found most influential and like, as I've gotten older, I see it like the people who are just so faithful mm. in circumstances that are just incredibly hard. Like I've been reading in Habakkuk and it's all about like, um, you know, Habakkuk just trying to like ask God, like, why are these things happening? You know, why are you allowing these things to happen? And mm -hmm. God is like, listen, like I have a plan and it's go like, you don't know what it is and you don't know when it's going to happen, but I have a plan and you just need to remain faithful. And, you know, Habakkuk is still questioning God. He's still, you know, struggling yeah. through that, but he's still remaining faithful. He's still saying, but God, I still trust you. Yeah. And like, that's what I want my influence to be. Mm -hmm. Like, I want people sure. to see that influence, not because of my own, like, oh, look at me, like I can trust God, right, but it's because yeah. I want people to know that, hey, you can trust God too in this season because he is faithful. Mm. And I feel like that's where I've like probably matured 
toward and is like, man, I want that to be where my influence lies. Yeah. That, that reminds me of a conversation I just had with a guy too. Uh, he's a buddy of mine and uh, just through some really terrible circumstances, uh, his house was destroyed. Oh gosh, and crazy. I was just having lunch with him a couple of weeks ago and it was after the fact. And one of the things that I needed to share with him was like, hey man, like I know that all this hardship has hit you and your family and it's mm -hmm. absolutely terrible, but I need you to know how unbelievably encouraging it has been mm -hmm. to me to see how you've navigated every step of this right. journey because literally every moment of it, he was just like, honestly, yes, it's terrible. Um, but yes, we're going to be okay because I know that God's got us. Yeah. Um, and then seeing as he takes every step of that journey, God being faithful, exactly like he's, it's just like, yeah, yeah. that influences me like crazy. Yeah. And that's certainly not anything that anyone would ever want to sign up for. Sure. Um, yeah. yeah. You're not wishing also, that on them. Yeah. Right. But that's, that's like God's redemption in those moments too. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That's really cool. cool. And even too, I love how you guys are, uh, already kind of um, equating the two, right? But um, as followers of Jesus, our influence, right, does stem a lot from our faith, right? Not just in the sense that, um, I mean, you look throughout the Bible, right? And there is countless verses, countless stories around the idea of influence. When you look at Jesus's life, um, obviously, you know, the most influential person of all time, right? Um, without, a, without a doubt. Um, but you get to see so many examples of good influence and, and and even just good stewardship of that influence as well than to um, through that relationship as well. So I'm just curious, how has that personal relationship with influence for y'all been impacted by your faith? I know Ebony, you were just sharing a little bit too about um, the way you've been spending time in Habakkuk then and some of the way how that's been informing some of that too, but like just in general, how's that been for you guys? Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I think it, it, it kind of forms the foundation of it. So for a lot of sure. people, I think when they think about their influence, they're trying to build uh, a platform for themselves in yeah. some way, shape or form. Yeah. Um, but when you follow Christ, you realize that like any good that comes out of my life, anything good that I say, anything good that I do, ultimately both is fueled by Christ and mm -hmm. then reflects Christ. Yeah. So anything that I'm doing, anything that I'm building, like it's not mine. Like ultimately this all points back to Christ because um, – yeah, everything kind of, or like that's the origins of it. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that takes like some of the pressure off too of like you know this. It's not, it's not me trying to like have this influence. You know, I know that like God is the one that's in me. He's the one that's giving me the words. He's the one that's giving me you know whatever it's I'm doing right. Yeah. Like it's all coming from God through mm -hmm. me, and I think that that helps you to not like I don't know if you're like man I really want to have influence. I think the first thing to go to is like, okay, where's my identity lion? You know, yeah. is it in Christ? Thank you. Totally. Like, yeah. Is my foundation, you know, solid? Because there's so many people out there, I feel like they're just, they have a shaky foundation and they go from one trend to the next to the next. And it's like, they don't have anything solid to like put their grasps in yeah. so that they can like have like uh, an influence that's lasting. Yeah, you know? totally. A way I've been kind of thinking about it, I've been challenged by it recently too that I'll share is that um, uh, I think Adam kind of actually, or Adam Bixby from our city campus actually had used kind of this analogy in um, at one of our wildfire our middle school camp uh, at one of uh, his messages there, but basically holding that like glow in the dark bracelet up to a light, yeah. right? And you know, lights are still dark in the room, kind of pulls it away and you see it glowing, right? Yeah. I think in a lot of ways, our influence shows out like that too, as we're spending time near Jesus, that's when our influence is most potent and like mm -hmm. visible to others because that yeah. that perfect version of influence that's rooted in Christ, that's not rooted in ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Um, like that's becoming that foundation. We're, we're drawing close to it. But again, in time, you know, that light starts to fade away, right? So it's like, hey, that continual discipline of being around Jesus growing in that relationship too um, can be just a, a huge, it, or makes a huge impact in yeah how the longevity of that influence into. Yeah. Yeah. And even just getting back to that, like I feel like one of the dangers is for me to try and build my influence so that I can form my identity around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rather yeah. than building my influence so that I can <clears throat> point to the God that formed my identity and can right. form sure. your identity too. Yeah. 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 Totally. And like it is such a, a is, subtle yeah. shift for that. And even like yeah. uh, I think one of the questions you posed, Ebony, was like, you know, like um, if you find yourself in a position <coughs> where you want to build your influence, like really uh, diving in on the question of why, like, do you just want to build your influence so you can like feel special or feel right. important yeah. or something <laughs> like that? Yeah. Yeah. Or is this ultimately about God? Cause that's, that's a bottom line thing. Yeah, yeah totally. 
So maybe uh, a great kind of landing point for us here would really be how, how do we do that? What are some practical steps that maybe you guys have seen in your own life that have just been helpful to kind of allow your influence to lead out of a place like that? Um, some practices you guys have, even um, just conversations you've been able to have with others to help kind of get you to a place like that in your own life. What does that, what does that look like for y'all? Yeah. Uh, a principle that I've thought about for a long time is just kind of like bloom where you're planted. Uh, if mm. you are faithful with a little, then you're going to be given more. So um, all of us have opportunities to love people and serve people. And that's mm. really what it comes down to. So sure. um, th it's easy to kind of get preoccupied. Well, well, I, you know, I, I wish I had that opportunity or I wish I could do that. It's like, yeah. don't, don't go there. Um, Cause God's given you opportunities right where you are right now. And based yeah. on your faithfulness with those, yeah. there will be other doors yeah. that open. Sure. That's yeah. great. I think like maybe similar, similarly, that's a hard word to That's say. That's all right. You Similarly. Got it. You made it. You made it. Along the <laughs> lines. <laughs> uh, I don't know who said it, so don't quote me on it. Uh, but there was probably during a leadership summit, they said, like, the best leaders are the ones who are boring. Or they, like, do boring uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I think of that, I mean, that's going a little more into, like, the leadership side of influence. But I do think that, like, influence is in the mun mundane mm. it's kind of like you're saying earlier just like it's the things that you do that you don't think people are watching or mm. people are seeing that yeah. truly speak more volume than the things that you publicly are doing mm. and i think that that's like a practical thing is like having just like the discipline to be boring having the discipline to yeah. stay in the mundane of like this is how i'm going to respect people this is how i'm going to love people um and just being faithful to that yeah sure sure we all thank you guys so much for chatting about this for a little bit. I think there's some great thoughts along the way. And um, I know they were encouraging me. I hope they were encouraging to y'all as well as you're kicking off 2024. Uh, we'll see you guys next time on the Ugly Shares podcast. Have a great start to your year, and we'll see you then.